Up to this point in the class, we've been talking about limits and derivatives and what we can do with derivatives. And now it's time to turn our attention to the second of the big problems that we talked about way back in the video at the beginning of the course. Remember, the first problem that we talked about was instead of just finding the slope of a line, we asked, what does it mean to talk about the slope of any curve at an, at an instantaneous point? All right, so that was kind of blowing up the idea of what we knew about slope to something that was more generalizable. And that led us to the derivative and all of the applications of the derivative. Remember, the second problem is what we called the area problem. And let me give you an example here. So I've got this shape right here. It's got these three straight lines and the fourth side, if you will, isn't really a side, it's in the arc of a parabola. And I want to know what's the area of this of this space inside those those the curve and the three lines. And with the tools we have right now, uh, we don't have the ability to answer that question. Uh, up to this point, we've learned about finding the area of rectangles and triangles and circles and a few more exotic shapes, but nothing this weird as, as you know, the, the side of a parabola. And even if we came up with, with a formula for this, I could stick any other kind of curve we've talked about here, or even a more exotic kind of curve, and it would still be something where we would want to find the area. Okay, so once again, we're going to kind of take our ideas of what we can do and kind of see if we can use the kind of calculus notation to to suss it out. So like before, as I said, we do know how to find the, the area of a rectangle. So if I took this batch of rectangles and found the area of each one and added them up, it's not the exact figure. I'm missing some spots here and here, and I've got some extra spaces over here. So it's not a perfect uh, capturing of the area, but it's a pretty good estimate. And if I took more rectangles, oh, I got this backwards, didn't I? All right, so if I started with three rectangles and then went on to six rectangles, it's a much better estimate. And you can imagine doubling the number of rectangles again and doubling and doubling and doubling all over again. At, at some point, it stops being something that we can't calculate by hand, but we could calculate it by computer for, you know, a million rectangles in here. But the idea is that as we get more and more rectangles, the estimate becomes a better reflection of the area. We can find the estimate of the area to any degree of precision that we like. And so kind of the calculus -y notion of it is that as the number of rectangles that we calculate there approaches infinity, our estimate is going to approach that true area. And that's an idea we're going to explore. That idea is called the definite integral. The idea of finding the area between some curve and the x-axis between sides on the left and right. We're going to, over the next bunch of videos, we're going to talk about some, uh, a couple different strategies for estimating that area. That's an important skill uh, that they will test on the AP exam, I promise, even a shortened one, I feel pretty confident that there's going to be uh, an area estimation problem in there. And then from there, we're going to dive into seeing if we can find some way of directly calculating uh, the definite integral, uh, which is going to tie even more closely into calculus. So that's just a little preview of what we've got in store for us.